Ladies and gentlemen, in the next panel, emerging trends in cybersecurity challenges and opportunities. Please welcome security manager at Cisco, Mr. Volodymyr Ilibman. Solution manager at GTB Technologies, Mr. Oleksandr Pogrebnoy. Security researcher at Kaspersky, Mr. Dan Demeter. Regional Director at Thales, Mr. Sergei Kuznetsov. This panel is moderated by Chief of Center for Response on Cybersecurity Incidents, Ms. Natalia Spino. Dear panelists, I welcome you in this uh, interesting panel where we have a lot of interesting uh, presentations. So, uh, dear uh, Vladimir, I welcome you in uh, Chisinau and uh, looking forward to your presentation. I'm not going to speak very long because I'm going to stay all day with you. So, welcome. I hope that you can hear me well. Very well. We and can see hear. You. We can hear, we can see you, and uh, we, you are going to convince us how to increase the efficiency and automation of cybersecurity in our organization. Really looking forward. So after the presentation of artificial intelligence, you will tell us what are the best way to increase it and how to do it. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, great. Um, I will do it. But first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to participate in this event. I see the great format, and it uh, understands the restrictions of virtual format because we, for last uh, year, for this year, we uh, did many, many virtual events and understand how, how, how hard to, to prepare it. And I see that you combine the best uh, different technologies from real and virtual world to, to make this event attractive. Uh, I hope uh, that you can see uh, my slide deck as well. Yes, we can yeah. see your slides and you can continue. Uh, so what I want to talk, so there are a lot of different technologies uh, which already came to, uh, to market and to world and to come in future. But if you're talking about uh, this situation, I know, Natalia, that you worked with uh, computer emergency response team and you know that uh, what the big issue now in the market is to react on cybersecurity threat. And there, there is a statistic, and statistic is, honestly speaking, it's not very good for, for us, for people who are doing uh, cybersecurity protection. And in many, many cases, uh, hackers are quicker than we are. And if we look to the reason behind that, we understand the um, security teams, ever if they are equipped with very modern security technologies, they're not always in time to react to the huge amount of cybersecurity event, incident, cases, and so on. And uh, it's only part of the story. The other part of the story is that right now, what we see from our uh, reports uh, on secure remote work, um, now the, uh, during the, this very tough COVID time when a lot of people are working from home and people are working by different shifts on the office, including security teams. Uh, we see that amount of uh, cybersecurity events is just rising up. About 20, 25% is average rise, which we got from an um, uh, interview of about 3,000 uh, security directors and specialists worldwide in different regions. Especially, we see a huge rise of a security incident in um, education sphere, in manufacturing, uh, in engineering, as well as finance and uh, IT, IT companies are always under the focus of cybersecurity uh, bad guys. Uh, of course, um, uh, there are restrictions which uh, security team face and Normal is not about technology, it's mostly about processes, about efficiency, about performance. And this metric are not um, clear until you started to work with uh, big security operation center or big company. 
А в Cisco we faced many times the not always technology help enough to simplify and to uh, make security more effective. I just translated a picture. It originally, the presentation was um, uh, was in Ukrainian. Uh, so, uh, if you're talking about cybersecurity teams, they are always like uh, doing some uh, repeated work a, a lot of time, and they need to to do and they need to invite uh, Will again and again, and they have no enough time to walk to look around and ask what we can simplify how we can uh, make our everyday work more efficient and uh, of course uh, they're trying to do to any people try to add technology to add processes to uh, add more people but what we see we know that there is a lack of qualified security expert on worldwide and this is a big issue a great issue in any country uh, in US in Europe uh, I believe the same issue is in, in Moldova as well uh, due to immigration due to issue with education uh, on cyber security so there's always a gap between education and um, uh, and what we required from people in security field and this uh, issue ever with technology because uh, if we add in additional technology, for example, uh, very clever, very smart uh, intelligence system which use artificial intelligence, okay, it's just new technology. And we need something to combine this technology together. So we need some cement, we need some, uh, some means to, to connect, to hold these bricks, uh, products bricks, processes bricks, human bricks, together in the single wall and what we did in Cisco for the last three years uh, we developed internally technology uh, not technology but platform approach to combine different pieces of security, security together you know uh, previous decade we made a big investment into security intelligence and Martin Lee uh, he opened this this uh, cybersecurity week, cybersecurity day, with his presentation on modern threats. And I hope that you enjoyed this presentation, which my colleague from London made. And Martin, he is uh, head of uh, outreach team in Cisco Talos, our investigation group. And for the last couple of four years, we did a big invest investment into combining different technology together. And we call this investment SecureX. So X here is connection between different pieces of uh, Cisco and uh, not Cisco security products to provide, uh, uh, let's, let's describe every word on this slide yeah, in details. So uh, why we are talking, uh, uh, it is cloud. cloud. So it's cloud-only platform, which uh, provide experience for security investigation, security visibility, uh, security analysis. It's built in, so it does mean that it's uh, how we say normally is priceless. So there is this platform is honestly speaking is free. So it's available for any customer of Cisco security free of charge, and it's a work works with any compatible products uh, and we are we have no plans uh, to monetize this platform and this platform is really multi-vendor it's really multi-vendor I will talk about that at the end uh, the idea of this platform is to provide uh, real services and provide services to security operation team to IT team and to network, network teams as well, because Cisco always, we are also a big network company. Uh, I will not talk a lot about technology due to lack of time, understand uh, that um, our schedule for today is rather dense, uh, rather, uh, rather hard. 
So I just want to make focus that when we de de developed this platform, it was a lot of interview and the work with many beta customers. And the main KPI, which was um, uh, which uh, developers received from uh, business unit was to provide better usability and to reduce a time of reaction, time of detection of attacks and time of reaction to cyber attacks. And uh, really, uh, developers of this platform, uh, they uh, were sitting with a clock yeah, and looking to typical activities in security operation center. How people uh, doing visibility, how they are looking to incident. And uh, we did a lot to provide a new style of uh, interface, which is flexible enough, uh, which is combined to uh, best practices from Mitra organization. Uh, which can be customized for different operation teams inside uh, customers. Uh, other point of our focus was to look into a reaction, how, how, how security operation teams, how cybersecurity experts are looking to incident like phishing email, uh, what systems are they using. Because normally, if we, we're just talking about simple phishing email, uh, security expert, security team need to look into three, four, five different systems to identify a threat, to uh, to do forensic and to re remediate a threat and to block um, a threat inside or externally. And this system combined different different console to provide single view, single pane of glass for for cyber security incident, not only to visibility, but also to reaction, including active block, active defense. And the last but not least, uh, we are talking a lot for during the last years about automation, about simplicity, and this tool, uh, this platform provide a rather visual, visual a rather simple way uh, to do orchestration and to customize systems. So I'm not programmer. I just had uh, some very basic classes uh, during my university time. Uh, and I believe that many sec security people also are not programmers. But what we are doing, we're providing some uh, visual programming style. It's typical done for children, yeah, when children are doing block uh, diagram programming. Uh, and what we see and hear from our existing customers uh, uh, ever in my territory ever in ukraine i, ha I have uh, rather big amount of existing customers who started to use these systems that uh, it simplify the uh, everyday security task and a uh, couple of slides before I finish, uh, that we are not working alone on this market, and uh, we are cooperating with a lot of uh, worldwide leaders on cybersecurity. It's, we're not talking about, we are working with uh, Europe, US-based company, with Israel-based company. Uh, we are working a lot with open source projects, project uh, to integrate them to security, and this list is not uh, final one, it was just during a launch of program, launch of SecureX platform, it was in June this calendar year, and ever during last uh, five months, a list of our um, vendors, our partners, uh, technology partners, uh, grows up significantly. So, now, what is the place of this platform inside um, customer organization? Depends on uh, size of organization. So if you're talking about mature big enterprise uh, companies who has, or government company who has own security operation center, who has enough uh, human power, uh, who has uh, different platform like a CM platform or a SOAR platform, Securities can be integrated to the existing landscape and to provide the right services and to provide the right, um, uh, right uh, technology and to integrate uh, existing security operation center with products. Uh, if we are talk, talking about some smaller company like commercial companies uh, who has no enough um, resources and technology, securities can be a single platform 
for very basic security operation center capabilities. And uh, I want to not to talk about a lot about technology. Uh, SecureX is rather simple. So you can just start to use it, uh, go to security.cisco.com and use Cisco uh, account or Microsoft account to start to use it. It's free of charge. Also, for tomorrow, we prepared a lot of um, interesting material during the workshop, which uh, my colleague Pavel Radionov will conduct. And I believe that during uh, three hours, yeah, about three hours, uh, any participant will get visibility in this security X and in this uh, in new instrument. That's all from my part. I hope it was interesting and useful for you. Dear Vladimir, uh, indeed, after uh, Martin's presentation in the morning, when we saw all the uh, threats and the big picture, now you told us actually what we know, that uh, life is complicated, right? And especially for operational people, when you have those amount of threats, and we have seen in his presentation that ransom and social engineering is increasing, and especially when now people are uh, home and the kids, uh, family, they are using this uh, technology. And, uh, and this, uh, well, let's not say illiteracy of using technology, but uh, people, they tend to forget about security. And uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And it was very interesting. And I'm sure a lot of, uh, of my colleagues and the participants from the region, from other countries, they will uh, join uh, tomorrow uh, uh, webinar. Uh, Pavel Rodion, one of uh, good uh, and great expert, actually. Everybody is uh, excited. Uh, last year we had him also. Um, uh, thank you uh, for uh, being our uh, main partner. As you mentioned, it's really very complicated to keep people, as I said at the beginning, to keep people to stay and to watch us. But I'm sure uh, instead of uh, food, we have intellectual food, right? So you grab something and you are back here in, the, in this uh, online conference and um, continue to stay with us because we really have another great presentation. The next speaker is uh, Alexander Pogrebnoy. Uh, uh, he will show us what are the hidden threats, the most unexpected reason of information leakage. As we have seen from Cisco, we have seen from other companies that it's really, it's not only about technology, but it's about humans. And so important is education. And one of the reasons we are doing this Cybersecurity Week, as I said in a new format, but doesn't matter that, it doesn't mean that we have uh, uh, great, we have also great experts. So it's really very important to, uh, to be like a wake up call for all of us. So with that, I uh, welcome our next uh, panel um, uh, speaker. Um, hello, Mr. Program Noy, and uh, welcome to Moldova. Welcome to Moldova Cyber Week 2020. With that, I give you the floor and tell us. Yeah, hello, everybody. Hello from Ukraine to Moldova. Nice to hear you. Can you hear me well? Yes, very well, and even we can see your presentation. Yes, welcome. Uh, okay, so thank you for invitation to participate in this great, uh, in this great uh, Cyber Week of Moldova. And today I want to speak to you about the hidden threats. So, you know, uh, when we speak about the data security protection, we always uh, think about something like antiviruses, something like a firewall or something else. Uh, and it's great because many attacks are going from outside of organizations. Uh, but when we speak about the data protection, we also need to speak about the inside leakage. Uh, you know that good leakage, uh, good, good uh, data leakage, it's like a magician's copy. So you just pay attention on something on his right hand, and with his left hand, he's making a trick. He's tricking you, right, with the cards of any other stuff. The same is with data protection. When we are all focusing from the outside attacks, so when we are all focusing from outside attacks, like DDoS attacks or other attacks, uh, by statistics, the 80% of the data leakages 
are made from inside the organization. So 80% are done inside the organization. From this 80% of data, data leakages, 50% are made by the employees who are working for the company. Uh, and they're almost usually done not specifically, but by the, by the knowledge of the company, the employees, or by the other, uh, other maybe reason. So today I want to speak about few of them. You know, the possibilities how data is uh, going out from your organization. Uh, I am the one of the solution managers from the uh, GTP technologies. We are data protection uh, vendor. So we are DLT vendor. We just do only DLT. We do not do anything else. That's why we're specifying in this market, analyzing it, working on improvements which can be done for the data protections in DLT. Uh, we are not a new company, uh, we are almost 20 year old company, all over like the world. Um, we are 18, 18 years old company, right? So we are founded in 2002. We have a lot of awards and other stuff in cybersecurity and we care about the DLT stuff. And when we're speaking about the cybersecurity protection, we need to think about next things. I just made uh, six of them that are now frequently used to, uh, to leak data. So the first thing many companies in our time, uh, they are still using the patterns and keywords of crazy stuff. Uh, when we should uh, think about the fingerprinting of data, uh, people mostly think about and they're preparing like the keywords, and they're preparing uh, uh, something like uh, key phrases or regular expressions, but the main thing to protect your data and when you lose your data is not protecting your structured and unstructured data with the fingerprinting. So we need to protect our structured data, our unstructured data, uh, and we care about it. In 2002 year, it was very, very, very old time, you know, uh, we just made a patent for the fingerprinting technology. Uh, so when we speak about fingerprint, the main purpose of this and the main issues which you can get or you can uh, face during the fingerprinting of data is the limitations of the field. Uh, it is uh, the limitations of the data part that you can protect. So we have done a great step ahead and we provided a specifically fingerprinted technology the intelligent fingerprints uh, that we say that can protect uh, you with unlimited parts of the field. So imagine you have a big database, a big database, right? And you need to protect it. Uh, you need to protect all of them. And many of the fingerprinting technologies, they're like, give you possibility to protect first thousands of fields of your database, or maybe first like two thousands of thousands of fields with our fingerprinted technology, which we patented, uh, you can fingerprint the unlimited quantity of the field. So you can unlimit, uh, unlimitedly like, fingerprint all your database and accurately catch all the data which is coming up. So like saying, when you're really speaking about GDPR, one of the most important stuff right now for European countries, uh, it's not a case when you lose any first name and second name. It's not a case for you. But it's case for you when you lose the first name and second name of your employee or of your customer. Uh, so with the accurate fingerprinting, you can protect your database and you can uh, get zero false positives. So your security officers will get less work. They will be more qualified in working with the existing incidents uh, and they can really protect the data, data leakage and see where and whom just wanted to do it. So the same is for the unstructured data, unstructured data, the file, intellectual property, maybe the code of the company. Uh, we can detect the, the leakage of the fingerprinted uh, document starting from five words. So it's very important. Five words, only five words. Uh, this is the first common stuff when people lose the data. They just provide not good policies, they just use keywords, they just use their patterns. But in really the main thing for now and the main trend is to use the fingerprints. Because the fingerprints are more accurate 
and they provide you less false positives, like in case zero false positives, right? And they can help you to protect your data more accurately. The second one is the classification system. So you know the GDPR uh, asks to have a classification system for your solution. So all the data addressed needs to be classified. And the second part which uh, you need to care of is the classification of your data. So this is the second part when people lose the data. Uh, we also provide such possibility to have a classification model inside the system. So no additional models need to be installed. So you know, when you need to install first three agents, they have a big way for your system. Uh, they utilize your CPU and your endpoint computers, your employees are arguing. Uh, so we need to have some solution, and this is a trend like, like right now. This is the facing issue, which can which way, which can uh, protect your security, your corporate network, your endpoints, and not have like two or three different agents or some other stuff that utilize your computer CPU. So we also care about this. The third one is very important, and it's a sim something that I'm facing a lot in the company. It's OCR capability. So there is a trend like now in the company is the most um, uh, sensitive data leakages are made in images. So it's very simple when employees are making a screenshot or they're making a picture, they create a picture of the data and they try to leak it from the corporate network. And uh, OCR or, or picture recognition, yeah, optical characteristic recognition, characters recognition, or the images should be protected for all of our perimeter. So mostly when we speak about the DLP solutions, uh, you can see the possibility of the vendors to protect your uh, pictures or images yeah, uh, when if they're like placed in data at rest. So they're not moving anywhere, you just find them, you just work with them and you protect them. Uh, but uh, the thing that uh, we are caring about and we are seeing and we are providing such possibilities to uh, protect the images in all perimeters. So imagine that you're copying the image to the file share. System should have capability to protect it, or you're printing an image with a local printer or network printer. System should have possibility to protect the data. Or you're copying it to USB device or attaching to Gmail. So we know that Gmail is very interesting stuff. They just are not sending their email, for example. They're copying it to their cloud, trying to copy their, to their cloud account, and they're trying to send from their like, repository. So the DLP system needs to protect the images, leakage, or OCR, OCR for all over the company. Because uh, from my experience working with different big companies, uh, the 40% of data leakage is made with pictures. So 40% of all data leakages are made using the pictures. So this is a place which you need to have care about, and this is a trend. So it's different from 40 to 60 percent for different companies. They lose their data in image format. So this is something that we also provide the possibility to uh, protect the OCR or pictures with no having any like um, CPU utilization or like service degradation for the system for the endpoint computer. Um, the other one, the other one very important thing for the company and number four is to have a cloud, native cloud app. So what do I mean? Uh, the DLP product should connect directly to the app of the cloud solution and work inside it. So it needs to have possibility to work inside the cloud. It can be different clouds like Amazon, Azure, or any other cloud. Classify their data, uh, work with uh, remediation actions in there. And this is the other crucial point. So we need to protect your cloud because 20 to 30 percent of all the data leakage is made by cloud. So, like when you copy something to the cloud and then you take information outside of your, of your cloud. Then, moving forward, moving forward, last two things that I want to cover and speak about is the file share auditing. Uh, it's interesting stuff. So, uh, file share is one of critical points of the data leakage in the company, also. 
Uh, so typically, people do next. They copy something to the file share, they go to this file share with the computer which is not protected, and they try to catch something from this file share. So you need to protect the sensitive data to be uploaded there, and you need to control this perimeter. You need to see what your employee is copying to the file share. You need to see what he's doing in the file share, what he's executing, what he's copying, deleting, remaining the file. Uh, and this is one of the threads that you need to follow. You need to see this, what your employee is doing, in order to have a better cyber security. And the last but not least, because we have a lack of time, uh, is a must copy of the file, you know? Uh, people and companies, they just uh, do not think very well about this perimeter or this part. So everybody from us knows the Snowden, right? He copied a lot of extensive data from American government. He became a famous guy, right? Uh, we even have a movie about him. Uh, but uh, a lot of employees in your company, when they're firing or they're doing something, they're copying a lot of data to their computers. I know one guy. Uh, who just copied, uh, who worked for a big company, worked by a company with more than 100,000 people. So it sounds like something like 150,000 people. It's a very big company, worldwide company. I will not tell the name of this company, but when he was firing from the company, he just didn't think about something. Uh, and he copied all his work, all his data. He was a pre sales manager. Uh, he worked with tenders, he worked with solution integrations, other stuff. It was not, some of this was not sensitive data, probably 80%. But he copied uh, from 200 gigabytes of data to his external hard drive, uh, just, you know, for what? Uh, to copy this to a new employee who will be after him. He told, like, I just wanted uh, to copy this data and then to give it to a new employee who will be after me because I want him to have some like, uh, specific use cases, other stuff. But uh, this guy had a good motive, but very, very often your employees, when they are firing, they have a bad motive, right? <laughs> so uh, you need to protect the mass copy. In this way, we can do next thing, like when you set up the stuff for your employees, you can set up that you can copy like 15 files in 10 minutes, and that's all, that's enough for sure, right? Uh, because very, very often, and I see it often, when employees are copying a lot of data to the external hard drive, not sensitive data, but it, this can be very harmful for the company. Very, very, very harmful. So when speaking of DLT solutions, this is a critical point, and this is a thing that we typically don't think. The mass copy, the author capability, the accurate fingerprinting detection, uh, the, the native cloud scanner, file shares, classification of the data. This is a thing that we not always think about, and we need to think about them when we think about the data leakage inside the solution. Uh, going ahead and uh, doing the last steps, I will keep some sides, but I want to pay attention to the other thing, and very important thing, it's not in the list, but the last one, is the DLP solution. You need to have possibility to be simple. Because if your solution is very complicated, right, complicated solution, then what next will do your system uh, engineer, your security officer? They will use 10% of the solution, right? And then they will stop, like, using it. Because it's very complicated, they are, like, they are tired, the employees, they need something simple in use that they can use with not reading uh, 2,000 of pages of the administrative guide. Because they will stop on 100 pages, they will not go ahead. They will just use the 5% of possibilities of the solution. So the last thing which I want to pay attention is the solution needs to be very, very simple in use for your security officers in order them to use it fully. So this is a little bit about the data leakages and trends in 2020. Uh, thank you for having possibility to participate and stay safe. Dear Alexander, thank you so much. Indeed, it's very difficult to, to now the answer to the 
hidden um, uh, threats. I thank you very much, and um, if there, there's going to be some uh, questions, I'm sure my colleagues, they will, uh, they will find you, and uh, they'll find more information about the um, uh, solution. So right now, thank you, wish you a great day, and uh, stay with us. Um, I, want to, I want to continue. We have another uh, great uh, speaker, uh, panel uh, presentation. So really looking forward how the future will look like. Dan, you are welcome in Kishinev to Moldova Cyber Week. And please convince us that look, the future will look great and I will see you in Moldova or in Bucharest. I'm not uh, having nothing against that. So I, uh, I really will, uh, will enjoy and hope the future will look a little bit different. Even you can see, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit uh, not very trained to look away, to look, you know, there are too many cameras around. So I prefer to have more people around rather than cameras and technology. So Dan, you are welcome. Greetings, everybody. Greetings, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, thanks a lot for this um, amazing introduction. Uh, I will start my slides now. As you said, um, Greetings everybody from uh, sunny and quite um, cold Bucharest. Um, I will be brief. Uh, my name is Dan Dimitar and um, I work for Kaspersky. I'm a senior security researcher. And today we'll be gonna be talking about the current uh, AP3 threat landscape, um, but also we're gonna be talking about the 2021 trends, which I think it's a pretty interesting topic as well. Before I go into um, these topics, I would like to mention my team. Um, <clears throat> I'm part of Global Research and Analysis team, which is, uh, in short, great. We are an um, elite group of um, more than 40 experts in um, or all, all around the world um, in more than 20 different countries. We are responsible for threat research, um, advanced um, innovation leadership, and um, we are focusing on um, the most highly advanced attacks that exist on the internet. So we're focusing on uh, APT attacks, on critical infrastructure threats, financial threats, um, attacks again against banks, um, or against um, like government institutions, etc. You might have heard about us, um, and you might have heard about our research. If not, um, make sure that you check securities.com. That's where we published all our research. And here it's just a sample of some of the interesting uh, attacks that we have uncovered or researched in the past years. Of course, you might know Stuxnet, Ducum, which are like, I, I would say, like um, the inception of the golden years. But you also might uh, have heard about Carbonac, Lazarus, or Satellite Tour. Nowadays, we are monitoring more than 900 operations and groups, which is huge compared to um, the past two years um, for comparison. Um, like this year, we monitored as, my, as many opera operators and groups um, in my APT or financial or whatever, in, as in the past two years uh, combined. So from those ones um, that we monitor, currently monitor, at least 20 of them are commercial. So they are aiming exactly for gain, monetary gains. They just want to extort, they want to steal, they want to like um, do whatever means possible for gaining money. Also importantly, 25 of them are Chinese speaking, which I think it's a pretty big in, in increase compared to um, other years. It's maybe because we didn't have good visibility in the past years, or maybe because there are more and more Chinese speaking groups um, coming into the market. Of course, you might have seen this, um, you might have seen this um, like pyramid, this infographic um, and there are different types of uh, um, attacking groups, and of course, eighty percent of the entire uh, of the entire like uh, crime and stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I should uh, share my screen, uh, but you know, I can also um, I can also uh, talk while I'm uh, I'm um, I'm sorry presenting. It's no problem. Let me share my screen, and then you can see it now. So. As I was saying that uh, we monitor um, more than 900 APT groups. So you should uh, see, um, we should see now. Let's see if I can start from the beginning. Okay. So you should see my screen now. I think that's okay. I'm sorry for that. 
it happens uh, to all of us. As I was saying, we have like 80% um, of the crime, um, of the cybercrime is like, um, you know, um, petty and uh, small crimes. And we analyze uh, this kind of stuff um, using um, automated, uh, automated stuff. Um, I hope you see my presentation now because, um, yeah, I will start sharing it. Then we have 20% um, 20 of this, um, of these attacks, which are kind of targeted. Those attack are, attacks are like uh, blackmailing or ransomware or uh, targeted attacks or like uh, spear phishing, which are like pretty targeted, you know, like for th specific organizations. So the attackers are actually doing some uh, reconnaissance, they're doing their homework and they're attacking your network. And then we have like um, the top of the like um, crown 0.01% of the, these attacks. Um, basically they are um, APT attacks and those are the most interesting ones. And those are the most that um, the ones that we are, um, we are analyzing and we're like um, doing, um, putting a lot of pressure in, um, in um, a lot of um, work on um, exposing those. So what happened in 2020? There were a lot, there was a lot, there were a lot of attacks. And I think the most, um, the most um, interesting ones, um, attacks are the ones that are beyond Windows. So we're used to seeing um, attacks on like malware targeting mostly Windows platforms, but now we, the changes have, the rules have changed. We have like Linux, um, macOS, uh, routers, um, malware, and we've seen an, we've seen an in increase of, um, of these um, samples that we're collecting and attackers are shifting their focus on those um, those uh, platforms. And this is um, because they see that they, they can leverage and they can uh, attack more, um, more devices in order to penetrate the network. Also, um, um, this year is the first time we've seen a real UF, uh, UFI of um, malware we've published about it and it's like, it's pretty interesting because this malware is implanted directly in the UFI, um, UFI um, um, software, um, firmware, and wherever you like um, reinstall your operating system, then it gets reinfected every time because the malware resides. It's inconspicuous. Um, it's like in the motherboard itself. So it reinfects the um, the operating system every time it's reinstalled. Mobile implants are also um, like pretty pretty popular nowadays. So we um, also um, with a focus on iOS and Android in the wild attacks. As well as you've seen um, earlier um, in the uh, in uh, in the in the earlier presentations, uh, big game hunting is also pretty popular. So I'm not going to discuss about this one. And also exploiting COVID-19 topics, it's something uh, new. Um, we've seen attacks trying to target um, biotechnical um, laboratories. They're trying to um, they're trying to steal data. To they're trying to uh, steal information about vaccine research and those attacks are actually be, uh, getting pretty popular. If you want to, s to hear more about what will happen in the, um, in the future, because unfortunately I don't have time to summarize everything, my colleagues uh, Ariel Kostin and David, uh, they um, had a prediction, um, threat prediction webinar uh, last week. Um, you can check it out. It's on Bright Talk. Um, it's publicly available. Uh, go to this link and then you can see more about what will happen, what we think um, great team will happen, uh, will happen in 2021. So what are the current challenges right now? F what we've seen so far and from our research and visibility, we've seen a shift in how uh, attacks are being performed. So um, we've seen that um, a lot of targeted ransomware attacks and um, the new addition is that um, we have, there are different groups which are doing the, pen, the like infection and um, infecting the network, and then they're selling their access to other criminal groups on, on the dark market, you might say. So APT threat actors will buy initial network access from cyber criminals. This means that um, the um, period, the time frame of infection of the attacking uh, uh, period is um, is smaller. So that's um, that's pretty good. 
for them. They don't have to waste time trying to do like reconnaissance, trying to like spear phishing attacks. No, they just buy the attack from somebody else and they're in the network. Then we see, we've seen links between targeted ransomware groups and underground markets. So more people um, are trying to, um, more and more groups are selling access and selling ransomware um, um, access. Um, and this, I think we we also believe that APT threat actors will follow and will try to will try to um, um, go with the same trend. As well, in 2020, we've seen an increased targeting of network appliances. So, um, mostly Windows, as I said before, mostly Windows operating systems were the ones targeted. But nowadays, we've seen that attack um, um, like target like groups, attract, um, attack actors and um, cyber criminals, they improve, they see that um, their targets have improvements in operational security. So they will look for other vulnerabilities and those uh, devices are um, mostly, is, uh, I would say network devices, uh, IoT devices, uh, such as routers, such as switches. And those devices need to be protected in order to try to, uh, to make sure that your network is also as a whole protected. We've seen a lot of VPN, um, VPN gateways being, uh, being attacked. And I wanted to specifically mention VPN net uh, gateways because those are the ones that are providing access to your remote workers into your network. So if you manage to get access Either you infect a remote worker and then from his or her computer, you go into the like protected network. Or if, if you manage to attack the VPN device itself, you are in the network. So um, attackers are um, deploying or and are using these techniques in order to be able to gain access into um, the secure perimeter. Also, for uh, social, social engineering um, is pretty interesting. Um, vishing and other real world um, approaches are on the rise right now. Now, what do you? What can you also do apart from infecting the network and trying to um, trying to gain access? You can try to do disruptive attacks, and uh, as I mentioned before, ransomware and um, attacks like shaming shaming group um, like uh, your company are on the rise. The problem is that the um, attack surface is as big as bigger as um, ever, and um, also collateral damage might be a factor when um, an, a group, for example, is attacking a specific uh, website, and then everybody else um, is a collateral damage. Now. Of course, we can't. Uh, we can't. I can't finish my presentation um, without talking a little bit about the COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, we've seen attacks um, in three, like two main uh, stages. So first of all, first of all, we we see that um, there in the info war, there are um, like uh, social engineering attacks and um, fake news, um, like. Um, fake news being presented and um, the attackers are exploiting this kind of uh, this kind of uh, attacks in order to spread fake news about covid-19 to spread like uh, a lot of uh, phishing attacks and um, my colleague um, in his keynote he also mentioned about uh, fake we fake websites trying to steal money from people about um, like uh, various covid-19 related um, supplies Research facilities, hospitals, and everything else are being targeted in order to try to disrupt the research or to try to extort money from them. So a continued pandemic means that there's a continued exploitation. And this trend will still continue in 2021 or 2022, like um, for sure this trend will continue. So what can you do? What can you, how can you protect yourself? Well, you need to have like, um, core and you have to, you need to have like an advanced um, protection you need to try to anticipate attacks try to quickly identify uh, the actor between um, the, behind an attack because based on its ttps and based on its uh, attack methods you can run, then try to um, uh, try to protect against this uh, this attack 
you need to adapt your defenses and you need to monitor your network. Monitoring is very important um, when you have like a, even a small or a like huge network, it's very important to monitor your network and to see, have a, to have like a good visibility on what's happening in your network. So what can organizations do? It's not enough right now to have only like um, one layer of defense and that's it. You need to start with your employees which is like pretty important. You need to enrich, um, enrich them with your security trainings, awareness. Um, then you have you need to have like advanced technologies like uh, APT intelligence, like SOC, uh, CMs feeds, like uh, IOC feeds and everything from like uh, various vendors. Then you need to have like a risk management and compliance. You need to uh, ask yourself, what happens if I'm um, like a part of an attack, if, then that, if I'm a target of an attack, what would happen? What would happen with my communication channels? Uh, can um, security officers still be in touch? Can security officers, officers still connect to the network? Maybe because they're remote, maybe you, you, you're um, working on a, under a, like a lower, um, lower personnel in the office. And then like, what can you do in order to protect yourself in case there's an attack? So with this being said, um, I would like to lastly mention that ransomware is the new trend and will be the new trend. Be careful of ransomware attacks and be careful of shaming um, because after a ransomware attack, there will be um, the, the next stage where attackers will uh, publicly expose your, your private files asking you for money. So they're carefully selecting targets. They're selecting targets with uh, a lot of money or with, um, with um, they have like um, insurance. They're doxing them, um, plus the ransomwareing their files in order to extort money from them. Also, the future will be a blend of established practices and a small number APT-like gang attacks with like uh, higher capabilities trying to do ransomware and extortion. So with this being said, sorry for the hiccup in the beginning and um, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you so much, Dan. Indeed, it was really very interesting. And uh, we understand it happens with your slides. Actually, I yeah. was waiting and waiting, but I was listening to you very careful. So sometimes it's good just to listen and not to... Uh, we don't need the pictures, you know, and to understand each other. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, you mentioned about this APT. It's a nightmare uh, and it's a big uh, headache for organizations and uh, um, you know, for uh, people. Uh, but uh, we have technology. Uh, but really, can you, and you, tell, you told us uh, how important is this to respect this uh, hygiene. And as uh, you mentioned, this uh, COVID is still day and the pandemic and people are in uh, uh, online. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, and, and usually what we have seen people, they react after something bad happens, right? It's like uh, when uh, we talk about awareness, about the importance of respecting hygiene, people, uh, they're thinking we have an IT guy within our department, why should I care about that, right? And do yeah. maybe you have some recommendations for, uh, for citizens, for uh, simple employees who do not understand this uh, complicated security because it's still complicated. You need to have policy, you need to have technology, you need to have all the time to update your uh, knowledge and uh, to have... Uh, so maybe you can give us a few takeaways from, uh, from your uh, presentation. Yeah, yeah. So basically there are two, there are, I would say there are two categories. For like day-to-day um, -day, um, citizen, like people who are trying to protect themselves, I would say be informed, stay informed as much as possible, read as many uh, public reports as possible, and uh, try to see what the uh, cybersecurity world is publishing um, about the latest uh, threats and attack vectors. I would also say that it's very important to have multiple defense mechanisms. And it's pretty easy. Let's say uh, you are like, um, um, you are um, a concerned citizen, you don't work in a, you know, like, um, you're not in charge of the security of a big company. You just want to protect your life. What can you do? Well, have a backup plan. Like, ju don't just rely on this, um, and like a um, protection uh, engine on an antivirus engine on your laptop. Be careful on what links you click. Be careful on what um, attachments you download and you execute on your computer. 
maybe sometimes instead of like downloading an attachment, you can also upload it to an uh, online service and view that attachment, view that file in, in that, uh, in that um, cloud service. So you protect your laptop. If you're in charge of an organization, and if you're in charge of um, protecting the um, perimeter of an of a, on, on, on organization, then things get a little bit complicated. And uh, again, I would say that you should be um, connected to the cyber um, cyber uh, like security world. You should read a lot of reports, but you also need to invest some money. You need to um, um, manage, convince your uh, your CEO, your CTO that they need to invest some money into protection. And as I said, it's very important that you have multiple uh, um, multiple layered defense of protection because when one protection or mechanism fail, the other one should be able to at least monitor, if not protect your network. Thank you, Dan, so much. Thank you, and wish you a great afternoon and stay with us. Uh, and for those who are in their offices, their rooms, their home, uh, continue to stay with us. And uh, we are going to have another interesting uh, presentation. As we have seen, uh, these bad guys are really very creative. And they have plenty of time, you know, to, uh, to find that uh, bad, uh, that uh, small uh, back door and uh, to enter and to enter in our houses. And uh, after we have seen uh, how the, the future will look like, and uh, um, right now we have, we, we will welcome our next uh, keynote um, uh, panel speaker, um, Mr. Um, uh, Kuznetsov. Uh, welcome, and uh, thank you uh, for uh, being part of Moldova Cyber Week. And we are really honored that you are here and to share your knowledge and. Uh, um, you will tell us uh, actually how to protect our data in the digital world. After this scary presentation, we've heard a little bit uh, early, uh, APT, all this ransom, like everybody is, uh, you know, even though we have all the backups and uh, we are careful and respect the, the hygiene, but still these bad guys, they know, you know, how to imitate and how to create these uh, fake websites and so on. So tell us uh, how we protect it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalia, thank you very much for allowing us to participate in such a great event. This is the first time Talis participates in this conference and I will hope that we'll become a regular speaker here. Can you hear me well or can you see my slides? Yes, we can hear you very well and uh, this, uh, promise me that this is a promise. You will be part of Moldova Saber Week every year. Deal? We'll try. We'll try. Actually, I would Good. also like to extend my thank you to the partner, Zantac, which actually invited us and persuaded to participate. I'm sure that we will definitely become the regular partner and the regular participant of this annual event. Look forward to that. Thank you. So uh, let me start talking, actually, because I have some good content to, to share with you. What are you going to be talking about? First, not sure if anyone understands what Talis Group is. So I'll spend a few seconds about that. And then I'll spend the majority of my time talking about Talis European Data Threat Report, which is absolutely new, which we combine together with IDC, and which gives us absolutely invaluable data, which we can look at breach statistics, increasing role of cloud at quantum. I actually make all my emphasis on cloud, understanding that this is where all the world goes through digital transformation. And on premises, which is more actually relevant to our today's reality in Eastern Europe or in ex USSR countries, we still understand that sooner or later, and that just a matter of years, probably months now in the COVID-19 time, that we'll get there. So that's why we need to think about that now. And I will end up my presentation with giving you a very clear way what Thales considers as the recommendation for modern security and I'll slightly touch the zero trust approach. So just let, let me start. So first of all, Thales is uh, considered today a number one security company in the world, having over 80,000 employees residing in 68 countries with over 19 billion euro 
turnover in 2019. And what I'm particularly proud of, over 1 billion euro of annual R&D investment. And since our key focus is security in one or another way, and certainly the trust, this is the money which is going into building the advantage of our end users. Besides security, we are also in defense, ground transportation, space, and aeronautic uh, directions. But today, I'm going to be talking only about security one. So coming back to the statistics and data threat report, that's a brilliant information which I'm sure you, you will manage to assess and understand and use to your advantage. What's important of that? As I said, cloud is everywhere and our data is going along with that, finding ourselves in absolutely different part of the of the infrastructure, being that a cloud, on premises, applications, or anything. But there's one common thing which you need to do with data. You have to protect it. And the data and the results of the survey, which we've, which we've run based on over 700 companies and over 500, over 50, oh, sorry, over 500 companies coming from European territory, gives us a shocking information that almost close to 50% of those companies or a half had confirmed that at some point of time that they had been hacked or breached. And this is a terrifying number. Just imagine that at some 50% or every second company acknowledged being breached. And that's only the information about those who know and who understand that they had been breached. As my colleagues previously said, many companies would simply do not understand that there have been intrusion. And out of this half of the market, we can say about 30% of the companies admitted the breach in the recent 12 months. That shows us that dynamics of breach and intrusions are going up and up. We've spoken a lot about regulations in Europe, which is increasing, and thanks to the introduction of GDPR, for example, which is extraterrestrial, more and more companies are looking at audit practices. Just imagine that 20, almost 25% of the companies, or one quarter, had failed to pass an audit from the first time. That, that's absolutely crazy information, because imagine how much effort, money, cost, time of top executives will be required to fix this and to run the second and third stages of audit if the first one failed. Talking about sensitive data and cloud, we had accepted the notion that through digital transformation, the data is going to the cloud. Currently, 46% of European companies admitted having all, just um, I, I reiterate, all data in the cloud. And that raises the question how to protect this data and what part of this data is sensitive. And about 43% of this data turns out to be sensitive data. Here we should ask ourselves, actually, look, we can't protect data in the cloud in the same way we protect it in the premises. That relates to the control which we don't have of the, of the cloud. That relates to the system engineers or some privileged IT workers that may have access to your data and no one can actually know about that. That's about collocation of your equipment, the physical collocation and your access to that. All these questions need to be answered. And that's why it's very important to understand that there are certain bricks which need to be used in the strategy of building your security strategy. The question here is, and, and I think that's the question that every single person had ever asked himself, whether your data is secure. And now we're asking ourselves whether it is secured in a cloud. And the answer is definitely no, because 100% of the respondents confirmed that they have at least some data in the cloud which is sensitive and which is not encrypted. And with only slightly more than 50% admitting that their data is fully encrypted, which means that Actually, if you divide that into, into encryption itself and uh, using the, the tokenization, then it's, it's going to be about 40% data tokenized and only 14% encrypted. That's completely unacceptable. And we need to understand that in order to move ahead in the current situation when we have 
COVID driving the digital transformation when we have attack, attacks growing as hell as all the previous colleagues had explained, you have encryption usually the last line of attack. Just imagine at some point intruders can overcome the defenses. They can overtrick the defense measures. And where they, they found themselves in front of the open safe full of money. So let's stop this now and accept that in order to make your data protected, you have to use encryption at some point. You have to use proper mechanisms. So when the intruders actually broken all the defenses, they found the empty box, empty safe box with data encrypted, which brings them no value. Uh, we're talking about cloud and the companies, but everyone needs to understand that cloud is different for, um, for every single company. More than 92% admitted using SaaS or software as a service and with 92% using more than 11 SaaS applications with 80% and 81% using at least two infrastructure as a service and platform as a service in their infrastructure. Complexity of data protection in this environment brings to the first place. Of course, it is followed by funds or money which needs to be spent and the performance of the data which needs to be addressed as well. Going into the new reality, you see that new emerging technologies are coming to the digital field. It's about mobile payments which are growing everywhere. It's IoT which being adopted. It dev DevOps which being adopted by every single company. Big data remains more or less the same because it's already high level penetrated. And containers. Just imagine today there are only 17% of companies using containers, but by the end of the 2021, the expectations that 81% or almost four or five, five time growth would impact on particular this segment. And definitely it will significantly impact the location of sensitive data, which we need to think about in the first instance. For the first time ever, the question of quantum computing threat came to the ground. In the past years, no one had ever thought that quantum computing can be a threat. It, it was so far on the horizon that no one was bothering about that. But now you can see it's on the everyone's agenda. And why? We understand why actually, because imagine the encrypted value, and we believe that the most important data is encrypted, then at some point it can be overtaken or captured. And if, for example, in five year time frame, when the challenge and, and the race uh, among the key players in quantum computing, for example, IBM, Google, Microsoft, international and national scientific societies actually come to the point when they have a product which they can use to decipher this information. That can mean a complete blunder to the countries which uses this information as secure information. That could be a huge impact on the corporation which has this security information which is considered a top secret. That will be the end of the world we know. That's why now putting together the infrastructure and protecting the, the services and data, one should keep in mind that this, will, this infrastructure will stay for a while. And no matter what type of new disruptions like quantum computing may come aboard, they need to be ready for that. That's why like many companies had already in, introduced the quantum algorithms and quantum random uh, generators inside of their systems and, and solutions. Watch out for that and we certainly recommend that you keep that in mind. Now let, uh, let me finalize with the research and address the question which I personally do not understand how it can be, but probably you can help me with that. Only 13% out of the total people we, we, we polled confirmed that they are extremely vulnerable. And 32% saying that they are not vulnerable at all. For me, th this is absolutely crazy and unbelievable. It means that 32% just don't understand what's going on in the market. They either don't, they don't understand the actions they need to undertake in order to protect their, their data. And, and data is money, as you know. 
because tomorrow, if you don't protect your data, you're going to be out of the business. So that means that just educate, like everyone said, get yourself more knowledgeable about the potential threats. And of course, use the main principles of data protection. Now, let me stay and spend the remaining three minutes of my time on how Thales approaches this, because our, our approach is very programmatic. We suggest and we offer that using the certain bricks in order to protect your infrastructure. Because, you know, everyone was talking about the perimeter up till now. Our notion is very clear and our statement is very clear. There's no more perimeter. In the times of the COVID, in the times of remote working, in the times of bring your own devices everywhere, in the times of new disruption technology and cloud, there's no more perimeter that you can protect. It doesn't mean that you, have, you don't have to use firewalls and the other protection. No, vice versa, you have to use it, but that should be a part of the strategy. We recommend using two major, probably three major pillars of security first. Definitely access control, because if you have the money that you need to invest and you can invest, invest that in the access control. That would be the first line of defense. The second one is certainly is about understanding where your data is. That's why we introduced the mechanism of data discovery, which helps us to identify where the data is based and then to protect it with encryption. And you know that encryption is only as strong as your encryption keys are. That's why we introduced the notion of centralized key management. And this is the core of our strategy. My colleague, Igor Afanasia, will talk about that tomorrow during the workshop, and he would be happy to share more information on that. As I said, we are a part of Zero Trust Security Initiative today. It means that don't trust perimeter anymore, as it doesn't exist. Trust identity. And only because of the, and based on the identity of the person, make a decision to grant the access to the application or to data or not. Like just the access policies and identity that matters in, the, in this world. And let's assume that there's no more perimeter as we discussed. And in this case, every single transaction, every single user, no matter how trusted he is in real life, considered to be an enemy and his access will be denied by default. So it's only about the artificial intelligence. It's all about machine learning, which will help us to teach our systems to better recognize our identity holders and evaluate device, time, location, network, and then to make a decision to give the access or not. And coming to the classical one, two, three approach, you have to do just three simple steps. First, discover your sensitive data, protect your sensitive data via encryption, and store the encryption keys. So that brings me to the conclusion, actually, to two major things. First, we've been talking about potential of breach. So don't think that breach is somewhere far away. Accept that the breach may happen to you. I would urge you to actually make a step further and say, okay, the breach had happened with my organization. What's next? And then evaluate from the other side how your data is protected, how you feel in front of the international society and your customers being able to declare what have you done in order to really protect your data. Thank you very much. I think that brings my presentation to end. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you so much, Sergey. Indeed, very interesting presentation. And uh, what you uh, presented, it's really, again, about uh, uh, investment. And um, uh, with that, uh, I want to uh, thank you uh, to all the panelists, uh, speakers from this panel. And uh, we have seen, uh, uh, indeed, it's really uh, trends, uh, they are moving fast. Uh, we need to we need to know uh, what are these uh, challenges in order to to know how to protect our organizations, our citizens. But also, we have seen a lot of opportunities. And with that, I thank you very much. Mm -hmm.